You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. All right, you have very little time to figure out what the song is before we start singing the words. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. We Wait. both, yeah, we both went Billy Corgan at the end. At the end, despite yeah. all my rage. <laughs> That was a song by Billy Corgan uh, slash the Smashing Pumpkins yep, yep. because uh, we're talking about a card that loves cages and welcome to the command zone, everybody. It's a new location. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How is it? It's Josh Lee Quiet. No, check this out. Hey. We got, well, it's it's the Game Nights logo. <laughs> Eventually, maybe we'll get a command zone logo back there for this. Um, we yeah, should. We're on the new studio set for Game Nights. Yeah. So How we're not going to, we're not going to show you any of the rest of it. There's cool stuff to that side. There's cool stuff to that side. Um, secrets when, I, I, when the next episode of game nights comes out you in september you're going to see the whole set uh, on september 20th yeah oh yeah we actually know the real date now yeah. there's a whole lot to announce about that but we won't get into it now because we're going to get right into the episode we are going to deck tech mirror the pretender today but before we do let's talk about our sponsors cardkingdom.com slash command zone that is going to be the number one and only affiliate link you need to use from now on by the way we've had cardkingdom.com slash game night slash c17 we're simplifying it because we want it to be an efficient and great process for you. So just go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone if you want to purchase magic products. You know, we're mats. going to talk about a whole bunch of cards for this Marisol deck. Oh, yeah. And um, you want to get the foil versions of all of them, right? I mean, or, or regular. Yeah, I know you like foils. I'm not big on foils, but I'm just saying you're going to buy magic cards anyway. If you use the affiliate link, you're supporting the show. You're supporting game nights. You're keeping the lights on. You're helping us continue to make content. Another great sponsor that we have is Ultra Pro. And in fact, have you seen these, Jimmy? Uh, yes. I, I brought these because they're they're a little bit hard to find, but Ultra Pro started so cool. making these special dice, which are specifically Planeswalker dice. You can see, and I'm sure Terry will put up a better uh, picture of it. You can see that they're shaped oh, like the, so the little cool. loyalty symbol in the bottom right corner of the Planeswalkers. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty sweet, so... Um, I know you like Planeswalkers, so I brought that for, for you, Jimmy. For me? Yeah, that's for you. Oh, wow. So That's so go. cool. But Ultra Pro, thank you again for sponsoring the show as well. Uh, another way to sponsor and support the show is directly through Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash command zone, you'll find our wonderful community there. And every week we shout out one lucky patron member randomly. This week it is... Planeswalker, Planeswalker Project. Project. Planeswalker which, Project, you rock. Um, I wanted to say that when, when we randomly chose that name, I was like, what is this? And, you know, I'm sorry. I had not watched your channel before, but I did go check it out. And it's a YouTube channel. It has quite a few subscribers, actually. Three or 4,000, I think. Nice. And does Good some start. very cool videos with, like, deck techs. It's all commander-focused or mostly commander-focused. There's sort of top five lists, other cool stuff. I would encourage people to check out Planeswalker Project Please on do. YouTube. Thank you for being a patron as well, Planeswalker Project. Thank you very much. That's all so right. crazy. Do you think people call you Mr. Project? Or is it like, hey, what's up, Planeswalker? Hey, what up, Mr. P? PP? PP? Oh, no, that's not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go straight into the deck tech for Marisil the Pretender. You know, we had said in previous episodes that uh, this was the commander that I was looking forward to the most, so mm -hmm. I built this. And the next episode, we're going to be breaking down the commander Jimmy that you were the, uh, the most excited about. Ramos, is that what Ramos sounds yeah. like? No, he, that sounds like Ramos dying. <laughs> Now I think about it, I think someone requested that we actually sing The Pretender by the Foo Fighters for this as well. Oh. What if I say I'm yeah, not like the others? others? What if I you know, um, a little aside, I did the trailer for the movie Death Race. Oh. And it, the final version of the trailer has Welcome to the Jungle on it, but an early version of that trailer had The Pretender on it. I can't imagine Welcome to the Jungle was a cheaper acquisition for them. No, it wasn't a price thing. We just tried oh, okay. a bunch of other things, but, uh, you know, the, the way trailers work, there's often many different sort of versions in contention for a long time and near the end they start to whittle away and i uh, gotcha and uh, welcome to the jungle one out anyway all right marisol the pretender let me read the card it is one blue black and red so four mana total for a four four legendary creature of course a human wizard mm. it says when marisol enters the battlefield you may exile an artifact or creature card from your hand or graveyard whoa and put a cage counter on it and then Marisil has all activated abilities of all cards you own in exile with cage counters on them. You may activate each of those abilities only once each turn. Jeez. So, 
Hold up. There's a couple of there's a couple of wording things here and, and rules things just to clarify from the start. I didn't realize it was from your graveyard too at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so when you play Mare Cell, you pick either a card in your hand or your graveyard and you exile it, and then you put a cage counter on it. And then Mare Cell has the abilities of that card, the activated abilities of that card. Now, the way this is worded, Mare Cell can obviously continue to gain more abilities as you go. So let's say Marisol mm-hmm. dies, you play again, you exile another card. Now there's the first card that you had a cage counter on it in exile and the second card. And now Marisol can activate for either or both of those abilities. Jeez. Um, so you can start to accrue a lot of abilities, basically as many as as you can manage to put cage counters on. He's pretending very hard at that point. We've we've um, compared Marisol to Siler from Heroes in the mm-hmm. past, which I think is a pretty apt description. Now, They've kind of attempted to make this more fair by adding that little clause that says uh, you may activate those abilities only once each turn. So keep that in mind throughout. That's something I think uh, people tend to forget when they're brewing with right. this card. Um, you can't just sit there and be like, I'm going to do 80 things now. you got to just choose one. Yeah, otherwise you could sort of get like an you could untap make an, ability and a yeah. tap ability and just go infinite automatically. So you, not that you can't go infinite with Marisil, um, you definitely can. It's just there's an additional hoop to jump through. The other thing to keep note is that if a card references its own name, then that's actually referring to itself and not the card name. So mm. um, I'm trying to think of. Well, the, it's just like whenever says, it's like when something enters the battlefield. So say when Marisil enters the battlefield, it's not saying specifically Marisil. It's saying when the card name that this is enters. When the this card enters the battlefield, card but but on yeah. activated abilities, it matters because sometimes you activate an ability and it says you know this card name does this. Right. That really says you know Marisil could work with that card. Basically, it's not it's not targeting that card name. Yeah. Um. We'll get into some examples of that in a minute. Like Tim's, right? Don't Tim's usually reference? Uh, no, Tim's say deal one damage to target creature or player. I'm trying to think of something that that references. Well, like Tree of Perdition right. would uh say you know um exchange the life total of Tree of Perdition's toughness. Well, it's really saying exchange. Here, Ooh. let's let me read the card. Okay. Uh, Tree of Perdition, and this is gonna be a card that's in the deck. Is three and a black for a creature plant has defender and it's a zero thirteen. But it says exchange target opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness. But what that card actually says is exchange target opponent's life total with this card's toughness. So that if Marisol gets that ability, Marisol's still a four four. Mm-hmm. If you Tree of Perdition somebody, now Marisol will be a four forty and that person will be at four life. So that's how cards like that work. Just for rules clarification. Sorry, it was so convoluted there. Okay, so what do we think about this card? What do you think about it when you see this card? Is it powerful? Heck yeah, it's powerful. Uh, the big thing is that Wizards, and this is the exact same for Ramos, which is you can only do this special build thing once a turn. Um, and obviously, blue is a color that has flicker abilities in it, and, and Ramos being a five-color deck can do a bunch of different ways to get that card in and out of the battlefield the thing about marisol that i really like is that he comes into play every single time that he was recast better than before yeah it's he like, like each actually time a little bit stronger up. a little bit yeah. stronger get I this pay, ability i, I paid two now. mana for that yeah <laughs> yeah that's a really An good point two mana, yeah. i do think too people are um sort of underestimating the once per turn thing in that it says activate this ability only once each turn not once on your turn mm-hmm so a lot of these abilities, tap abilities, activated abilities, that's totally still broken because I activate on my turn, I activate on Jimmy's turn, I activate it on yeah. you know, Maria's turn, I activate it on Megan's turn. All of a sudden, I'm using it still four times on a rotation of the table. That's still insane. So you know, remember the multiplayer aspect. Don't get caught in the cage of, oh, I can only use it once per turn. It's not that good. Well, nice if you reference. can tap it, untap it, and do it four times... You don't need to go infinite. That's still going to be awesome with a lot of abilities. Yeah. I mean, that's why all of our favorite untapper, every each opponent's like untap step is so important. Like that's, that's the whole point. You got to do it four times. Sometimes you only need to do it twice or three times to, to, to really, to just really be, do the effect. Yeah, yeah. Or really have an effect. Like it's the same way we're saying, like if you're casting three cards in a single turn, you're on your way to victory. That's usually a really, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really big st- sign that's saying, well, that person is winning because they're doing so much stuff. Yeah. Um, so what's the plan for the deck that I decided to build? 
it's it's a ton of activated abilities. That's my favorite thing in Magic is just on board abilities and just figuring out you know well, well, technically I can do off this. board abilities <laughs> as these cards. There's another strong part about this card is all the cards with cage counters. You cannot interact with them. I mean, you need a processor really from uh, Battle for Zendikar or yeah. something. That's really the only way nobody really plays those cards. I mean, maybe they will now if this this deck becomes really good. I don't think this is like a tier one competitive deck either. No. Um, and I did want to say that I built this deck to be powerful, but I didn't try and combo off. Um, yeah, I think you can build versions of this deck that are literally trying to, like, there's a Sage of Hours combo with yeah. Anthroplasm that's, like, unlimited turns. That's not exciting to me. Um, but it is the type of deck that you build enough synergy into it, you're just going to find infinite combos sometimes, kind of on accident. And so there are definitely some in there. But I didn't build the deck to sort of get to its combo as fast as possible. It's just going to have fun doing activated abilities, being like, look what my guy can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I can do it three times. Okay, go. And, and that's kind of the way that I built it. And I think it'll be fun and powerful. It in can that still respect. win, though, right? Oh, yeah. It definitely can win. It's definitely very powerful, I okay. think, as a deck. I just don't think it's, you know, A1 top tier. It's probably on our power level scale. My guess, and, uh, you know, again, we just built this deck. And, you know, I'm not sure. But my guess is it's around a 7-ish. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So let's start the breakdown with the most fun part of the deck, which is the cool activated abilities who doesn't love cool activated abilities and i suppose the first thing we are going to go for is infernal denizen this, this card is, you're gonna have to zoom in or go to the gallery. i gotta go to the gallery because, because this card it's like chains of mephistopheles it's yeah. just not one that you want to read the original text for so this is an old card it's from i don't even know what it's from but here's the thing. Terry's going to put it up on screen right now, and the text will be so small, you wouldn't even probably be able to yeah, read it. Yeah, in fact, actually, read the text on this card and then and then listen to what I'm saying about how differently they phrase things back in Ice Age. <laughs> All right, so it's a seven mana, or a seven in the black for a five-seven creature demon. Not, in, not You're not summoning an infernal denizen anymore. <laughs> At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice two swamps. If you can't, tap infernal denizen, and an opponent may, can control, may gain control of a creature you control of his or her choice as long as infernal denizen remains on the battlefield so obviously you never want this creature on the battlefield i don't know why you play an eight mana five seven with this but <laughs> it does have a tap ability gain control of target creature for as long as infernal denizen remains on the battlefield so it just steals creatures and the thing about marisol and you'll notice that with the, with many of these creatures is that marisol only takes the activated ability it doesn't take that big downside yeah so marisol just exiles this card from your graveyard to your hand when he comes into play and now can just tap and gain control of target creature for as long as Marisol remains on the battlefield. Yeah. Pretty, pretty simple. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, and very cool. It, it, it makes your card evaluation totally different. And I think you actually want to look for cards that have big downsides like that because they were balanced against the big downside, right? So right. they're going to have a better activated ability because, you know, whoever was designing the card is like, it can do something awesome because the downside is so big. Uh, speaking of which, there's another card called Minion of Leshrac. Also from Ice Age. So this is four black, black, black. It has protection from black. Uh, sorry, it's a 5-5 five, five demon. At the beginning of your upkeep, Minion of Leshrac deals five damage to you unless you sacrifice a creature other than Minion of Leshrac. If Minion of Resh Leshrac deals damage to you in this way, tap it. We don't care about that, obviously. We're never going to play either of these first two cards. Um, but you can just tap it and destroy target creature or land. Bingo. Bingo. So th nice. I like the versatility of being able to take out lands too. There's there's lots of problematic lands in our format, obviously. Yeah. You know, Gaius Cradles and Maze of Iths and all That's kinds true. of That's all true. kinds of junk. So um and there yep, go ahead. Well, I'm just gonna say on the topic of like you're never gonna cast these. This is a seven <laughs> mana uh legendary vampire. Oh, this could be your commander. Shaku and Bringer. Flying. Five five. It can attack if there's another creature on the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose three life. But activate ability, tap, exile target creature, and put the plus one, plus one counter on Shaoku. Nice. Exile, just exile a creature. Exile on a stick. Yeah. Now, these are all pretty cool uh, because you get to do something, but you only get to do it once. That, that doesn't seem fun. Yeah, well, and we'll talk about we'll, it. Boys yeah, still we'll, that we'll talk about that in a minute. But I, I do want to say that there are other cards. There's like Avatar of Woe. There's a bunch of other ones to choose from. These are the three I chose Steal something exile something or the third one is have a choice between land or creature i love this next one yeah bro. this is great okay so the next one and i've been looking for some place to put this card me too i'm sure you have too and it's hard to put into decks because of the casting cost it's so hard um 
and it's just the kind of card that a lot of decks, you know, play big Eldrazi, but this one's hard to fit in. And so I'm glad this is a deck where it's like, yes, this card actually makes sense and will totally work. So Except you're not really playing it. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you're <laughs> cheating a little, but that's what we do in Commander. It's Kozilek, the Great Distortion. So this is the wow, new wow, wow, Kozilek, wow. not the OG one. It costs eight diamond diamond. So eight and two specifically colorless mana. For a legendary creature, Eldrazi, it's a 12-12. When you cast Kozilek... Uh, if you have fewer than seven cards in your hand, you draw cards equal to the difference. Has Menace. None of that matters because you're not going to use it that way. You're going to exile it and put a cage counter on it. And then it has an activated ability. It says, discard a card with converted mana cost X, colon, counter target spell with converted mana cost X. So this makes Mersil able to start countering things with an activated ability. But the plus side is, and you mentioned it earlier, Jimmy, Marisil can put cage counters on things from your hand or your graveyard. Hey. So hey, discarding sweet. a thing is actually something you want to do because you still have access to it for your sort of prime thing that you want to do, which is put cage counters on things. Mm-hmm. So I really like Kozilek in this deck. I think this is finally... We found the home for it. Finally. Uh, you also like Tree of Perdition. We just talked about this. So Tree of Perdition is just this like really silly card from uh, Eldritch Moon where if you can tap it, it's a 0-13. You exchange opponent's life total with this person's, with Tree of Perdition's toughness. So they'll go down to 13, which was the key number of that set. But if it's Marisol, then it's 4. So you can take someone from 40 to 4, whatever life total they're at, 2-4, which seems pretty good because then they are dead to a lot of things. In fact, they're dead to one of the other cards in the cool activated abilities category, which is Hate Flare. And this is a super interesting one oh, in, yeah. in combination with Tree of Perdition. So if you ever get Tree of Perdition and Hate Flare with cage counters on them, you just kill somebody. <laughs> so you tra- Tree of Perdition, bring them down to four. And then Hate Flare, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop reading the entire casting cost and everything because yeah, we're only caring matter. about the activated ability, right? So Hate Flare's activated ability is two in a red and the untap symbol... So the creature has to be tapped, and then you pay two in a red, and you untap it. And it says, Hate Flare deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Well, Hate Flare itself is a 5-5, but Marisol is a 4-4, so we'll deal four damage to a creature or player and untap itself. Right. So so you just need one end step to Tree of Perdition them, and then on the upkeep or whatever, you can Hate Flare them. You don't even the need to. You can do it all in the same, because Tree of Perdition, you tap it, bring you down to four life. Now, the Hate Flare is an untap ability. I pay two in a red, untap it, deal gotcha. four damage to you. So yeah. right, right. So Marisol can do all of the abilities on him, but only once. Only once those. on each right, ability right. per turn. Yeah, I forgot about the untapping yeah. part of it. Yeah, you see this symbol so rarely, and normally it's like, oh cool, it can be a really good blocker or whatever. But in this case, it's actually just totally sweet with Marisol. And um, yeah, so untapping things is actually the next category. But before we move on to that one, there's a card that is one of the best cards in the deck, and you're going to build a bunch of cards around yeah. the idea of eventually getting this card into play, and you can get into some weird loops where you can kind of lock down the entire table with it, and it is. Nevin Reel's Disc, because Marisol can also exile an artifact out of your hand. So Yeah, don't forget, it's not only creatures. It's yeah. creature or artifact that Marisol can sort of steal the ability from. And usually those things are like, unless it's a mana ability. But, but, in but this Marisol case, can Marisol steal, steal mana, mana abilities. abilities too, yeah. I think actually Marisol would be way less broken if they had put the... Can't Unless use it's, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean it's fine. It's it's better for brewers, I suppose. But anyway, yeah. uh, Nev's disc. Nev's disc is a great card by itself. It's a four mana artifact that comes in the battlefield tapped, and then you can pay one to tap it, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Normally, you have to play this and then wait a full turn cycle. And it, it's interesting because it does hold people hostage. But Marisol's case, he doesn't come in the battlefield tapped. Also, let's say you already used Nev's disc once in this game. It's in your graveyard. You cast yep. Marisol and yep. you just exile it out there. You know, I. It's funny because I've been playing Magic since the very beginning, and Nev's Disc is one of the sort of original Magic cards. And yet I always assumed that Nev's Disc made you sacrifice it to use it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's just just because it destroys itself. You think that. But Nev's Disc is a tap ability, and if you can make Marisil, um, you know, uh, what's the word, indestructible Mm -hmm. or somehow avoid the wrath part of it, you can just hold the entire table hostage all the time by continuously using that ability because if Marisol's not dying from it, you're you're in business. So Pretty good. So anyway, let's keep Nev's Disc in mind. We're going to reference it a few times here. Um, so a lot of those abilities you'll notice I chose, they cause Marisol to tap. So that kind of is is rough, right? Because now I can't use, let's say I put Tree of Perdition and Shaku Endbringer mm-hmm. both onto Marisol. Well, if I tap to Tree of Perdition somebody, 
I have to untap Marisol to then use Shaku Inbringer's ability. I right. can use each one once per turn, but I have to s- still obey the laws of tapping and untapping. So the next category is untap Marisol. Now, Hate Flare is one way. We already talked about to do it. This is another really good way. This it's, is a, this is for Ben Bateman, who loves this card. Call out to Ben Bateman, who, the yeah. This is our podcast. So it's Pillipala. I heard is, this name, and I was like, that's not a real magic card. <laughs> it's, I was like, oh, it is. It's a real and it's magic a Scarecrow. Card. It's a good magic card. Yeah, we probably should have talked about it more, but I don't think we've ever mentioned it on the show. Well, it's just interesting because unless you're reducing the cost of it, it doesn't seem... I mean, there's a lot of ways to go infinite with this kind of effect, though, for sure. Yeah, so it's two mana for a 1-1 artifact creature. A Scarecrow has flying, but it says pay two and has the untap ability. So Pillipala has to be tapped somehow, but you pay two and untap it and you add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Well, Marisol will be tapped for sure if he steals this ability. So, so yep. So Pillipala really just gives Marisol a way to untap and getting some mana back, it really ends up costing you one mana basically to untap it. Yeah, him. as long as you use the mana that turn. Yeah. Now remember, you can only use that Pillipala thing once per turn, but if I have Shaku, I've got Hate Flare, I've got something else, I can all of a sudden on your turn do it, on my turn do it. Right. Because I can use those untap abilities on everybody's turn, too. Yeah. And then you have Horseshoe Crab, which is just a two in the blue, one, three. But for blue, you can untap Horseshoe Crab. So this just gives Marisol the ability to untap himself for one blue, which is pretty sweet. Yep. Very useful. Um, there's a really cool one. And this is an old one from, I think, The Dark, I want to say. Yeah. It's a uh, Eater of the Dead. And this ability is you pay zero. And then uh, if Eater of the Dead is tapped, untap it an exile target creature card from a graveyard. So you have to exile a card from somebody's graveyard to untap it, but it doesn't cost you any mana. You just, boom, you just untap Eater of the Dead. And again, you can do this once per turn. Yeah, that's really absurd. I mean, here's the thing. If Marisol gets Eater of the Dead and untap ability and one other thing, you just you can just start like machine gunning down everything. Again, you don't have to go infinite. If it's Shaku, you're just like, exile something on my turn. Exile something on your turn. Exile something on Megan's turn. Exile yeah. something on Maria's turn. I mean, that's just untenable. You're going to be in such a good position if you're doing things like that. Yeah, and then they were like, all right, fine, we'll kill Marisol. You just play it out the next turn. Yeah, get another <laughs> ability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Ramp time? Yeah, let's talk about the ramp. And the ramp is interesting in this deck because Marisil can put cage counters on mana rocks. You're finally not punished, actually, for putting it on mana rock, for putting like a Gilded Lotus in your deck. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, and we've talked about, I think, recently curve considerations where we want our ramp to be. You know, we generally want our ramp to help us get to our commander, not cost more than our commander, that kind of thing. Not in this deck. In this deck, I just want the rocks that tap for the most mana. Yeah. Because Marisil, if I get it, him out, and I put a cage counter on something. I want Marisol to tap for three or so. Wait, is Marisol guy or lady? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Marisol could be both. I do like the hair, mm-hmm. but the po- I don't. You know what? Marisol is just an it because it's becoming so many different things. Marisol is pretending to be yeah. whatever it wants to be. There you uh, go. Yeah, he she has a wand though, which I really like because that's very wizardly. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the big rocks, and we're not going to read them because we talk about them all the time, but it's Gilded Lotus, Thrawn Dynamo. I like Mana Vault a lot in this deck um, because you don't, you don't have punished. the downside oh, of my it not untapping. And you can still play it on turn uh, one. Yeah. And at a certain point, you know it's going to get blown up. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, Mana Vault is absurdly powerful. I think you still play Signets, too, because a Signet on turn two helps you cast Marisol on turn three. Right. So you still want those two mana rocks. So, you know, even though you would not imprint or, sorry, cage Mm -hmm. a a Signet because it's just not worth it to have Marisol tap for one additional mana. True. Uh, There's a really cool one that I like quite a bit, and it's called Patron of the Moon. Um, This is an activated ability that works as a ramp. There's not a ton of that outside of green. Uh, so Sorry, I was kinda this going... card says Moonfolk Offering on it. And yeah. That's something I don't think I've ever seen in the deck. So Patron of the Moon, it's a seven mana card again. I'm not going to read all of it, but you can pay one and put up to two land cards from your hand into play tapped. Pretty cool. So just think about that's burgeoning, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even better, possibly, because I can do that on my turn, on your turn, right? On everybody else's turn. So that... Combine with some card draw. It's very powerful. Yes, exactly. You have to combine it with card draw. So interestingly, that will be our next category. Hey, I, I dig it. I like to talk about sort of the intricacies of how you use different card draw spells in different decks. So in some decks, you just want, you know, Consecrated Sphinx and Rhystic Study. And in some decks, you want... Arcanist the Omnipotent. Actually, both of these activated abilities are incredibly yes. good. Yeah. Arcanist may be the best target, I think, for Marisol just based on this now that what I'm seeing. And I like drawing cards. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Arcanus is a six mana good. three four wizard. You can tap him to draw three cards, or you can pay two blue blue to return him to its owner's hand. So it's got this self bounce ability. 
in limited, it's just absurd because it's if it sticks around for one untapped phase, you that person is drawing three cards and they have the forever ability to return it to their hand if you ever try to remove it. Pretty good. Yeah, so it protects Maricel, also allows you to bounce Maricel back to your hand so you can replay and get more cage counters on mm -hmm. more stuff. Also just taps and ancestral recalls. I like Arcanus because Arcanus is a spell that you would be willing to just play. Yeah. You know, you don't have to put a cage counter on it. So this is a very powerful card. I agree. I think it's one of the best cards in the deck. Um, you another don't hear that one too often, actually. That Arcanus is. Yeah, Arcanus yeah, yeah. is always like, oh, it's really a good, little but too six slow mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the next one is Magus of the Bazaar. So I can't believe this is this affordable. Yeah. Well, the Maguses don't tend to be super um, True. expensive. So it's one in a blue for an O one, uh, but it says tap it, draw two cards, then discard three cards. It's trying to be Bazaar of Baghdad. Yes, exactly, and. This is a very powerful effect because you get card selection. And again, going to the graveyard is basically just as good for most of your cards as if it's in your hand because mm -hmm. you're going to want to cage counter stuff. So this allows you to cycle through your deck, find the really important cards that maybe are the cards you can't put cage counters on and the ones that you can, you put into your graveyard. So uh, I like that one a lot. The next one is... Jace's Archivist. This is one of those cards that's like on the periphery of being used in a lot of decks, and I always end up cutting it, yeah. but I think this is a deck for it. It's a one blue blue. You can tap, pay a blue and tap the Vidalcan Wizard to have each player discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So don't do it to the person that just drew a 1,000 because uh, then everyone mills out, but... I mean, well, it's I not guess, the worst. I guess, yeah, you it's just, not the worst. You just draw. But no, it's pretty <laughs> sweet, though. I, I like having windfall effects, especially if this is a Marisol-specific windfall effect. Yeah, and again, you're sort of drawing even the cards you're discarding. I mean, you still have access to them. So. Yeah. And and that and that's another reason I would say that for a lot of the other card draw, I would use wheel effects, wheel of fortune, windfall, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I would fill out my card draw with wheel effects because, and specifically the ones that dump cards into your graveyard and have you draw more, not the ones that have you sort of shuffle them into your library. Because I want more stuff in my graveyard that I can just have more options to cage things. Yeah. Um. So, okay, we got stuff in our graveyard. We got some cool stuff we want to put cage counters on. But, man, it's going to be slow because what am I going to do? Cast Marisol, put a cage counter on something, and then Wait hope it turn. dies yeah. somehow? Or what am I? So the next section is two things. Marisol is like this is one of those decks that's very reliant on its commander. Yeah, I will say that. If you look at all your curve and your creature cards, you just don't want to play any of them. Yeah, you're you also can't putting cast a lot of them, right? Yeah. yeah and you... if you're exiling from your hand, then you're also putting yourself a card disadvantage. Oof. So Tough sell. The next section is called Protect, because I don't want Marisol to die. And Serve. And Collect. And Collect. Because I want Marisol to be gathering more abilities as he goes, or as she goes. I have no idea. If it's as it show. goes. As it goes. You'll float too. So, yeah, this is a good one. The Soul of New Phyrexia, once deemed one of the top 10 artifacts by Jimmy Wong, incorrectly. <laughs> but I was really stoked on to, it. We're trying to get it back. We're up. getting it back there, yeah. So it's a 6-6 six, six for 6. It has Trample. It's, uh, it's a colorless. You can actually pay 5 and permanent to control gain indestructible until end of turn. And it also has the activated ability. You can pay 5 to exile Soul of New Phyrexia from your graveyard and permanent to control gain indestructible until end of turn. I don't see that being as relevant unless for some reason... I mean, reason you're dumping in bin. stuff in your, in your bin quite a bit. Yeah, all right. Can, so Soul could just be there. It could just yeah. be there and you could just want to use it. But think of this. You got Nev's Disc on Marisil and you've got Soul of New Phyrexia on Marisil. Oh, for 6 mana? You just wipe everything. Except for your stuff. Yep. So that seems pretty good. Yeah, that's a winner. It's <laughs> a very Josh thing. That's to a do. less convoluted combo than how your Marchesa deck. That's wins. really true. Maybe I take apart Marchesa and uh, I just and just you know, you know have it, this deck. It is Grixis, so it yeah. is very fitting. That's funny because I made Mar Marchesa into a five color deck, and then I'll make this. I'm not making this five color, which no. by the way I don't think would work. Um, this is actually what I think is the single best card in the deck, as far as it just has the correct amount of versatility for what you want, and it's yeah. going to get you off to the best start. Well, it kind of also has four activated abilities yeah. on it. So. so it's Etherling. Etherling is a creature, and again, I'm just going to read the activated abilities. It has four of them. Only two are really rev relevant. You mm -hmm. can pay a blue, and you exile Etherling, and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And then you can also play a blue and make it unblockable this turn. You can do that thing that blue does where you give it plus one, minus one, or minus mm -hmm. one, plus one also with blue. That's not, again, very relevant. It might be sometimes if you're going to swing in unblockable and finish somebody off. I guess you could do it. Yeah. Really, the thing you're doing here, though, is using the blue mana to exile, to, to flicker, to yeah. flicker Marisol. So 
that flicker both protects Marisil from removal and board wipes because it comes back at end step. And when Marisil enters the battlefield, you cage more stuff. So that's a way. If Aetherling is what you cage first with Marisil, you're in mm-hmm. super good shape because now you, on an end step, you know, or at some point, flicker, get another ability. Flicker, yeah. get another ability. Flicker, get another ability. And you could very quickly, both one rotation of the table, get four or five abilities on Marisil, and now you're really rolling. Yeah. Yeah, there have been a few cards like Aetherling, but none that have just a straight. You can exile itself. That's a very rare thing to see on cards these days, so that's pretty neat. Again, Nev's Disc. Yeah. Activate Nev's Disc in response to that trigger or to that activated ability. You blink Marisol out. Everything gets blown up. Marisol comes back at end step. Yeah. Works very good with Nev's Disc. This exactly. is another version of Aetherling, basically. Yeah, this is really interesting. When I saw this, I was like, oh, this is very clever. It's Argent Sphinx, and it can do essentially what uh, Aetherling's first ability is for blue to exile it and then return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step, but it has Metalcraft, which means you have to do it. You can only do it if you control three or more artifacts. But still, the ability, I think, is one of the most important things to reuse Marisol. So I would bet on be like, sure, I'll have three artifacts out. I and you have, have a lot ramp. of artifacts in the deck because you have the ability to sort of cage Exile artifacts. Oh, so you got goodness. Signets, you got, you know, you got Sensei's Divining Top, which is another very good target. You have, oh, an, here's, a, here's another artifact. Um, uh, you finally found a way to get rid of Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah, exactly. and think of, how good, <laughs> think of how good Top is with a cage counter on it because it also protects Marisol because you can put it on top of your to library. To your library to draw a card, yeah. Yeah, and so. Crazy. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this card is one of those cards we keep mentioning, and I think it's just going to be one of those really good cards in Commander Forever. It's Mirage Mirror. This is from Amonkhet. It's three mana for an artifact. It's Amonkhet, right? It's not uh, I think this is actually. I think this is our. Okay. I see the Limbola horns. Oh, yep. It's from Hour of Devastation. My bad. Sorry, everybody. Um, it's an artifact. Costs three mana, but it says you pay two, and Mirage Mirror becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. Now, remember, if you do this. Marisol's not Marisol anymore. It doesn't have all the other activated abilities. Right. But it can become interesting things that are on the battlefield that you maybe want to use right then. Rocks. Rocks. Um, Crazy also, creatures. I like the ability to become a land to dodge things that say destroy target non land or exile target non land permanent or right. Cyclonic Rift. Oh, That's, I turn into a yeah, land yeah. and all of a sudden Cyclonic Rift uh, returns all non land permanents to their owner's hand. Man. If I turn into a land, you can't... Yeah, I dodge that. So It's such a good mirage. Yeah, so that is just a, a very versatile uh, ability that I really like. Yeah. And it has the ability to protect and do other things. Yep. Uh, now, of course, because you have all of these tap abilities, one thing that you really want to do is be able to do it at instant speed slash do it when the creature comes down. Because I think there's nothing worse than the Marisol being played and then you have to wait a full turn to use a tap ability on it. Yeah, you have to be hasty. You Does not. You seem really need good. to play Marisol and be able to use stuff right away. Yeah. So you have obviously anger, which because you're pitching stuff to the graveyard already has a great spot there. If it's in your graveyard, your creatures get haste. I think you have to control. A you have to have a well. mountain as yeah. well. Yes. You're gonna um, have a mountain. Um, and then this card I don't think sees enough. It's thousand year elixir. Sees enough play. Three drop artifact, and you can play the activated abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. Yep. And yep. you can pay one to tap the thousand year elixir to untap target creature. So worst comes to worst, you can just exile this with Marisol and you get another untap ability. Yep. Oh, it sort of has to tap itself to untap itself. Eh, I don't know if that works. Not. But you play it out <laughs> and it works really well as sort of a haste generator and gives you an extra activated ability if you don't have a pilly pala or something like that. Right. Or you don't have the you know, the mana to do maybe hate flare or something. Um, also just some other one quick ones to mention hall of the bandit lord lightning yep. greaves those are good haste enablers that are definitely in the deck and then we're going to finally sort of wrap up and obviously the full deck will be in the show notes uh, we can't talk about every card it would be a super long show um, so there are many other cards in each of these categories but the last category that we want to talk about is more than once per turn so we want to open we want to circumvent that text on marisol that says you can only use each ability once per turn uh there's a couple of cards that do it these are the ones that are going to have the highest ratio of sort of going infinite when you play them Uh uh-huh so be careful i'm not saying don't go infinite i'm not saying do uh, you know we'll paint a target on your back with this one though yeah you know it's funny as we've as we've done the show more played commander more i find myself shying away from infinite combos more and more I still have them, and occasionally I still do, but I definitely don't build my decks to do it. So I both think once you've won with infinite enough times, you're kind of like, okay, I get it. It's fine. Yeah. You know, I don't feel particularly awesome when I do it, but it's fine. Um, so both of these cards I would put on the sort of 
maybe I would include, maybe I wouldn't, but we would be remiss if we did not mention that. The Danger Zone. Uh, this card is one of the ones that gets mentioned maybe the most or among the most as far as like cards that maybe should be banned in the format. Now, I do not think it should be banned, but it turns out it's going to be good in Marisol, and the next week when we talk about Ramos, it's going to be good again. Yep. So Dead Eye Navigator. D-E-N, Dead Eye Navigator. So it has Soul Bond, which means you pair it with a creature when it enters the battlefield or when the other creature enters the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And then as long as Dead Eye Navigator is paired with another creature, both creatures have this ability. One in a blue, exile this creature, then return it to the battlefield under your control. Now, a few things to note here. Um, Dead Eye Navigator returns the creature immediately. So now, oh, I should clarify this too. This is one of the rare cards in the deck you don't want to put a cage counter on because... Deadeye doesn't actually have an ability, an activated ability. It won't give that that flicker ability to Marisil, uh, because it, it because of the wording. It basically that ability doesn't exist until it's soul bond. The thing is, if you soul bond the Deadeye Navigator in play to the Marisil, now you flicker Marisil, and when Marisil comes back in, it's a new creature. So it doesn't care that it activated the abilities before and you get around the once per turn thing. So yeah. as long as you have a haste enabler and dead eye, you can use your abilities as many times as you feel like. And you can start to do things like generate infinite mana with gilded lotuses and staff of dominations and thing like things like that. Um, so that's one way around the once per turn limit as far as using the abilities. This is another one. Quicksilver elemental. It's a three blue blue for a three four elemental. Uh, you can pay blue and quicksilver elemental gains all activated abilities of target creature until end of turn. Uh, uh. It doesn't say another <laughs> target creature, which would make it way better in this case. Yeah. But I mean, sorry, better just from a game design perspective. But because it doesn't say that, you can copy. Marisol can copy the abilities Marisol already has. Yeah. Now and Quicksilver can copy it as well if you just want to play this by itself. You can play Quicksilver and yeah, have Quicksilver sort of be in play with Marisol and start to basically do the same things you could do of Marisol cage counters the Quicksilver. But just twice as many now because yeah. you have a Quicksilver Elemental. By the way, this clarifies that rule clarification where it says if any of the abilities use that creature's name, use this creature's name instead. So it's just yeah. clarifying what we were talking about earlier. Um, there's been an interesting rules thing with this too, so we should walk through that. So, um, all right. Let's go over this really quick here. So it's a little complicated, right? Marisol, let's say, has four abilities on a cage counter. Mm-hmm. You activate each of those abilities once. Then you activate, sorry, four and the Quicksilver Elemental. So the Quicksilver Elemental has a cage counter on it, and Marisol has four other abilities. Let's mm-hmm. just say you've gone off and done some Siler stuff, and Marisol's gotten pretty sweet. You activate the other four. Then you activate the Quicksilver Elemental to gain, and Marisol targets himself and now gains all yeah. the abilities he had. But those abilities can now be activated once more each turn. Yeah, because he has double copies of each of them. And right, and one of them is the Quicksilver it. Elemental, <laughs> so he can activate the ability to copy all the abilities again. Yeah. Now, it seems, and there's some, there was some argument online, it seems as if the Quicksilver Elemental, when it copies the abilities, shouldn't also get the Rider Clause of can only be activated once each turn. Mm-hmm. But... Um, Eli Eli Schifrin, I think, is is the name. It used to be Matt Tabak, and now it's Eli as sort of the, the overall rules manager, the ultimate rules authority in mm-hmm. Magic. And Eli came on and said that when Quicksilver Elemental um, gives the ability of all the activated abilities to that creature, it actually does keep the only can use it once per turn thing. Oh. So you can still go infinite with Quicksilver Ele- Elemental, but you need hmm. to pay mana each time you need to account for the one blue mana each each round of activations to keep gaining to keep doing it. I know that sounds complicated. Um, it really is complicated. Stack is not for actually. the lighthearted. It really is complicated. Um, anyway, those are the two sort of big ways that I put in the deck to get around the once per turn thing. You can start doing crazy stuff. Um, but I, again, I think that it's it's sort of underrated the fact that you can just use it in a multiplayer game on everybody's turn. Yeah. That, that alone is powerful enough. Yeah, we, it's like the Prophet of Krufix status, minus yeah. how good that card was. But to, to a certain degree, it's pretty good. I mean, I think the best way to use this deck, because you need a ton of card draw, unless you're constantly pitching stuff to the graveyard to exile that instead. Because every time you play Marisol, then you're losing a card out of your hand. But if you're losing it out of your graveyard, then great. 
you have some really powerful tutors, things like Buried Alive mm-hmm. uh, and Tomb. That gamble can sort is of great too, actually. Gamble, because you don't care if you keep it or not. That can sort of guarantee getting the Etherlings, the Argent Sphinx, and right. the, the things that are really going to sort of get that snowball to start rolling down the hill. So uh, I think that's important too. There's a card I wanted to talk about. Um, because when we're building these decks, you know, we're going online. I asked on Twitter. I'm just gathering all the information I can just like everybody else does, to try and build uh, the best deck that we can. And there was a card that popped up quite often that I don't think is actually very good, and I wanted to talk about it oh, for that right. reason. And it's... I, sorry, I should clarify. It's not that good, I think, in this deck. It's very good in many decks. But this uh, was like a top-recommended card on EDH Rec. It yeah. seems like a lot of people are just automatically throwing it in. Yeah, and I didn't choose to include it. I don't think it's horrible. I just don't think it's great, and it's Panharmonicon. And the idea being that you can cage two things whenever you play a Marisil. Mm-hmm. Now, if Panharmonicon was a three... Sorry, Panharmonicon is a four-mana artifact, and it basically doubles all your Enter the Battlefield abilities. In this deck, the only Enter the Battlefield ability you really have is Marisil, yeah. which seems good, except for that the CMC of both spells is the same. Panharmonicon costs four, Marisil costs four. I can't imagine a world where I ever want to play Panharmonicon and then Marisil. Right. So, to me, that... that Even if you could ramp it out? If you could like turn three into a turn four Marisil, I think I'd that still would be... rather play Marisil first. I, I right, believe most of the mana. time, yeah. yeah, and get that going. Um, so I just don't think. And then once I'm, I've got an Etherling or an Argent Sphinx, or I'm bouncing it back to my hand and replaying it, I'm fine. I think I don't need twice as many. I can, I'm, I can subsist just fine with just one. Yeah. I don't think Panamonicon's awful. I just, if it only works with one card in your deck, and I had to cut a card for mine that I'll talk about in the Ramos episode that only worked with my main commander it's just not worth it yeah so anyway i just wanted to, to talk about that a little bit maybe, i'd rather I, have you yeah. know what i could be wrong Pan- panarmonicon maybe is worth it uh, i don't know i mean look if you have your like your ways of bouncing and reusing him multiple times a turn i think that's better to have those because those cards also work as things he can exile except for dead eye but that i think is a special well dead i can still flicker him and you're yeah. still getting more abilities each time he comes back yeah in, exactly so, yeah. so. Um, anyway, I don't. I do not disagree with you. I would like to tell everyone that Geth, Lord of the Vault, is also in this deck. One of my favorite uh, black cards. I mean, ever. if you're going to make everybody wheel and you're going to give Mercil activated abilities, that seems like a gimme, right? Yeah. I mean, right. I might as well just start b- growing stuff out of here. This deck is going to have the ability to generate a ton of mana. Yeah. Because of, you know, if if Mercil is a Gilded Lotus and a Pillipala, and yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you mana, can only right? do, oh, well, no, no, you can no, only no. do it once per turn, but that's still a lot of mana every turn, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, you get net seven or something. Uh, you get three. You use two of it. You get two, but then you're untapped, so maybe you have like a Thrown Dynamo on it too. So now all of a sudden, you know, Marisol oh, himself right. could be generating five, six, seven mana pretty often. You know, you have a Horseshoe Crab maybe on there too, and you're not infinite, but you can just do it enough that you make a ton of mana. Yeah, you make seven, eight, nine mana with Marisol every turn. So. And the colors you want. Yeah, so I you you want things like Death. And other outlets just like, well, if I'm not infinite, but I just happen to be able to generate like 20 mana, I want to be able to use it in some way. So, all right. That is Marisol the Pretender. To the listeners, what do you think about Marisol the Pretender? And how would you build her? What did we miss? What did we get wrong? Nothing. Obviously, there's some combo stuff that you could put in there. And I think you can yeah. build com- combo Marisol. I want to see what the best infinite combos are with Marisol. Although, I, I, I'm sure they're all going to be along the same lines of make a ton of mana or something. There's Sage of Hours, like I said, with infinite Anthroplasm. Turns. There's yeah. um, there's some Lab Maniac stuff. I'm just bored by Lab Maniac personally. How but I know, you know there's always a Lab Maniac combo or, or three running around. Uh, Anthroplasm allows you to add the counters, and then Sage of Hours allows oh, you to right. take off counters. So yeah, to get you, turns. you just make both of them, and then for yeah, you gotcha. get infinite turns. And and because of you know buried alive and entomb and some other stuff, you have the ability to sort of very quickly find those pieces. You also found the right deck for Intuition, a card that I've always thought just could never find a spot for. Which is it's a it's a, a tutor in blue where you get to search for three different cards or just three cards, and then you show them to your opponent. They choose one, you put that in your hand, and the rest go in your graveyard. So, so there, you put them in the damned if you do, damned if you don't category, where it's yeah. like, it doesn't matter where you put them, graveyard or hand, I'm still going to cage them. Cage it up. Despite all my rage. I'm still just a Marisol in a cage. cage. Or all the cards Marisol has stolen and throw them in cages. <laughs> if only you could target other people with Marisol's ability. Yeah, that'd be sweet too. <laughs> Although you'd still want to build the deck the same because you wouldn't yeah. count on them having activated abilities. Uh, if I was playing you, I would. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like <laughs> half my decks have awesome activated abilities. Well, you know, hey, you are what you are. What do you want? That's, that's true. That's what I am. Uh, 
So if you think this deck sounds cool and you want to order some of these cards, the place to do it is cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Again, that's our affiliate link now for all things. If you watch game nights, if you watch our unboxings, you want to support us, you want us to keep doing cool content, use that affiliate link when you order cards and you'll be keeping all that stuff going. Yeah, not to mention, I, I we've been looking at this deck on Tapped Out and every time you go to one of the pages, it, it shows you the, the price that it's selling here and somewhere else. And Card Kingdom is always listed. And so far, I have not seen one foil version that was uh, more expensive. Card Kingdom's prices Card on foils are really, really good. good Card Kingdom prices. is just good in general. Just good value. So make sure you guys go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Also, big thank you to Ultra Pro, who continue to make really cool products, specifically for Magic, like these awesome Planeswalker dice, which I cannot wait to use. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, well, you're going to use them a lot more than me. I don't run a lot of Planeswalkers. That's true, actually. Yeah. But I will be excited every time you pull one of those out. Yeah. Uh, except for then you're going to tick it up and you're going to double season <laughs> and I'm going to lose. But I'll be like, but the dice were cool. The dice were cool. Ultra Pro making a lot of cool stuff lately. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for all the things that they keep doing. And the fact that they're continuing to make better and better stuff is really exciting. Yeah. Improvement. Something that we you're looking at the literal result of as we sit here. In you're this. looking at a small piece of it. That's you're, all we yeah. can show you right now. We don't want to spoil the surprise. There's yeah. a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, so obviously we, we don't want to, what was it, scoop the lead or something? What was it? Bury the lead. Bury the lead. Yeah. We're also yeah. trying to, um, we're stalling right now because we're trying to think of an end step. Because now it's time for the end step. Where, where we, we talk, talk about, about something, something cool outside, outside the, the world, world of, of magic. magic. You can see our like eyes looking around the room. Is there anything I in can the tell room? you one of my favorite improv games. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So this improv game is really simple, and we just did it, where you start to try and say, say what the, the, the other, other person, person is saying at the moment, moment that, that you're, you're talking. talking. Wow. <laughs> this improv <laughs> game is, is Fun. fun. You and know you what else is fun? fun. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect it to go there. You you had a light in your eyes. Like, I was like, oh, the light bulb came on. That's a really fun improv game. I don't know if there's a name for it, but it forces you to like stare at the other person and like look at their lips and be like, what are you saying next? Wait, wait, for real, when you did improv. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite like improv game that you guys would do? That was one of them. We also did a game called Zip Zap Zop, which is really simple, where you just go zip to a person across the in like a circle. You go uh -huh. zip, and then they go zap yeah. to someone else and zop, and you literally just do that. Zip Zap. Wait, zop. wait, you do that on stage? No, 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 no. Oh, not yeah, on stage. That, I mean, on these stage, are warm ups. What are the? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I sorry, oh, I meant stage? like on stage. What was the your like your favorite improv sort of? You know, my favorite setup was usually because we didn't do like games. We weren't like a performance group in that way. Whenever I did improv, it was always like, hey, give me something that is this size. And you would right, change right. it up each time. And then my favorite was when someone would take that and then literally never reference it until maybe the last moment <laughs> where it all like, comes hard. around. It's like, do you want some watermelon? And she's like, oh, we got there. <laughs> we did this one where we'd pull up an audience member and we would be puppets. So we weren't allowed to move, <laughs> but they were supposed to move us however we were talking about so i'd be like oh hi jimmy it's nice to meet you and they'd grab your hand and go like this, <laughs> then grab your hand and shake, and it, shake like it. This. but then you'd, you'd come up with like oh man i really got to do some push-ups right now and yeah. they'd have to like bend you that's great like, yeah that was my favorite audience part. participation is always fun yeah anyway improv cool improv. check it out check it out yeah check it out uh, <laughs> uh you know what else you should check out oh, is no. the masters of modern podcast alex kessler ben bateman kessler was just on the show last episode they talk about the modern format and all things competitive magic and very often recently, they talk about Commander quite a bit. They just did like a Commander oh, yeah. 2017 like set review. Cards that we wish were in modern. <laughs> That's like the most sure thing, loosely guys. tied no problem. to. This was basically Kessler and Ben being like, I want to talk about these Commander cards, but I have a modern podcast. podcast yeah. And they're like, ah, screw it. Let's just talk about it. I didn't listen to the episode. I probably should, but I'm guessing Teferi's Protection's on there. It's got to be. That would be like the most powerful spell in modern ever. For I listen to their show sometimes, which is better than them. They never listen to our show. So, you know. Wow. Yeah, that's throwing them under the bus. Anyway, but you should definitely check them out because, like I said, even I listen to them and I don't even play modern. So, you can find them true. on Twitter at the, MM, at the MM cast or uh, right next to us at collected.company. All right. Our editor for the show is Terry Robertson, who uh, may be joining us in Los Angeles soon, I believe. Terry's coming down because uh, we're growing so much. We're like, Terry, no, we need you 24-7. We need you. 24-7. Uh, so hopefully you guys are going to see sleep. more. <laughs> You're going to see more of him uh, soon, hopefully. And, of course, you can always see the work that he does on the show at YouTube.com slash The Command Zone Podcast, where he is our editor for the show. Special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer, who has done quite a bit of stuff for us recently that, again, we cannot reveal all of it. But... The thing right over there to my left that Jeffrey did, 
is going to be sweet. It's you guys are it's going to you guys are going to freak out when you see it on game night. September 20th, get ready. Hi. And hi, 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 hi. And you can find Jeffrey on Twitter at Living Cards MTG. You can also see his work on our videos at the beginning at the end he does the Living Card animations there to give you a hint as to what he may have helped us with recently. He's pretty good at those. Yeah, totally fun. unrelated to what I was talking about before. He's good yeah, at those. Of course, yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next time. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>